Greetings, people of Earth. Greetings, my fellow Canadians, ladies, gentlemen, seniors, disabled, diversely abled, kids, people of all walks of life, people particular to the uh, British Columbia, South Surrey area. Hello. Hello from the uh, COVID Chronicles. I'm thinking of changing the name actually to maybe the COVID cast, maybe the Corona cast. I don't know. The beer company might have an issue with that, but we'll see. So it's the evening. I am back again. I'm doing these twice a day because stuff is happening so fast that I think it's important to, uh, you know, keep checking in. Shout out to Jixer. Shout out to Deanna, Lisa Nagy, Kim Gerard, or Kim Powell. Lisa Steven. Well, I got that right. Anyways, they were quite a duo back in high school. Shout out to everybody. These are tough, tough times, and um, they're not about to get easier anytime soon, right? So let's take a look and see where we are in virus land. What's happening? <clears throat> All right. Hang on. Let me, let me pop a couple of my advanced nootropic here. Picking four of these bad boys twice a day now. Keeps me sharp. Um, shout out to McDonald's for staying open. Can't say I've ever been a fan really of McDonald's, but their coffee isn't too bad given the circumstances, right? So here we are. <clears throat> okay. Coronavirus cases, 336,075 deaths, 14,613. And that's, that's gone up by, this is the number that I'm really watching. I think the cases are going to skyrocket um, just because there's more testing done, right? We have to assume there's lots and lots of people that are just walking around that have been infected by this virus um, and simply don't know about it, but there's no testing available, right? Like if I wanted to get tested now, I wouldn't even really know what to do. Would I, would I just walk into the emergency and say, hey, I feel sick? Would I go see um, a general practitioner, a family doctor? I'm sure there's a hotline that will tell me all this stuff and ask me my symptoms and, and those sorts of things, but I don't know. Um, so let's see where we are at with uh, separate countries here. Italy, big numbers out of Italy, big, big numbers, and they just keep going. Total deaths, new deaths, 651. Yikes, the USA is really moving up quickly. Um, they're not quite as far in the death deaths though. <clears throat> Um, what I wanted to look at actually tonight, tonight we're going to talk about rumors. We're going to talk about all the different rumors uh, that we've heard and how to assess um, the credibility behind them. I mean, most times you're never going to really know um, whether a rumor is true or not unless you can actually confirm it through a source, but that's not going to be an option most times. Most times you have to go through probability and credibility. So, um, one of the rumors, uh, I got about 10 rumors here, and I'll get to one of them first because it's probably, is it a rumor or, it, it's not so much a rumor, but it has been the case up until now, and that's that this uh, virus only affects older people. I think we've heard that a lot. Uh, I think something like zero or close to zero people under the age of 10 have been infected by this virus. And the majority of people that have died have been older, like 70 plus, um, or they have underlying physical conditions. So I wanted to take a bit of a deeper dive and see if this is still holding up. One of my concerns, and I think it should be a concern for all of us, is that we are going to see the frontline workers, the people that are most in contact, that can't um, self-isolate. Um, if we start to see the de the virus transmit into these sorts of people, and if we start seeing fatalities among these people, 
that's when I think we have a really, really big problem. So that, to me, that is the most important indicator. Because, <clears throat> you know, somebody like that, that's, you know, if, if grocery store workers, um, younger people, uh, healthcare workers, you know, if they're young and they have a good immune system uh, and they just shake this off like it's a common cold and they're able to keep working, I think that's really going to do a lot to alleviate um, people's concerns and to just kind of make things manageable. So these are the daily deaths. And if we scroll down on this page, we get to some details among the deaths. Okay, six, in Italy, we had 651 new deaths. Italy is the place to watch. Um, a 15% decline in new cases and an 18% decline in new deaths. That's very good news. Let's see if that is a, this day is an outlier or a trend. So we'll be watching that as well. If we see consecutive days um, where the death rate is declining, then we can assume that that's a trend and we can assume that the measures are working. <clears throat> Among the deaths, a 34-year-old man in Rome with no existing health conditions. He died after being hospitalized for four days in sub-intensive care. He had, he had developed a fever after returning from Barcelona, Spain. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so that's not good. That's one person, one healthy man um, that's died. Uh, we expect to see the first effects of the stringent lockdown measures adopted on March 11th after about two to three weeks. So 11, 21 days would be March 32nd. Wait a minute. There's no March 32nd. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, okay. Um, so April 2nd. So by the end of April 2nd, uh, that'll be the end of this week, I believe. Today is March 22nd. Okay, just into next week. Um, that's when they're really expecting the measures they've taken. Um, to really begin to take hold. And that's when they want to see trend reversal. Uh, not many details. Let's look over at the United States. They have some details on the deaths. Actually, sorry, let's go to Spain first. Spain is a little more advanced in the progression. Yeah, every, every graph you look at on this is just... Hockey stick all the way, right? Uh, da, da, da. March 22nd, 375 new deaths. Is there any details on the deaths? Uh, a 37-year-old Spanish civil guard with no underlying health conditions has died of coronavirus yesterday. He had been admitted to the Quiron Hospital in Al Alcorcon, Alcorcon, Madrid, for several days before being admitted to ICU a few days ago. Okay, so you know what, let's check the United States, and then let's determine if we are seeing a pattern here. <clears throat> wow, New York. Oh, and by the way, New York, I will be, um, I will be patching directly into New York tomorrow. My sister lives, where does she live? I think she lives in Brooklyn. She lives close to the heart of the epidemic in New York, and uh, I'm going to be talking to her and asking her what life is like under lockdown, because I'm pretty sure the rest of us will be experiencing that soon. So let's go through our American brothers and sisters and get some details on how they are being affected by this once they have the virus. Okay, 114 new deaths in the United States. Four deaths in Louisiana, 83-year-old, 90-year-old, 77-year-old, 50-year-old. Three new deaths in Michigan, a 52-year-old man with underlying health conditions. Uh, yeah, nothing. So, <clears throat> okay. I think that is one rumor. Um, that's one rumor we can probably confirm as more or less true. I mean, like I said, that's not really a rumor that's been reported, but it's, it's one of those things that can be erroneously reported. Um, when, when, there's, when there's things, uh, when, when there's a catastrophe that comes, like let's say it's something else even, let's say it's um, a flood or a famine or something like that, um, 
you know, it's easy to draw the conclusion that the sick people, the oldest people, or the youngest people are the ones affected. Well, that's often not the case. It's often the case that they are the first affected because they're the most vulnerable. Um, symptoms and um, fatalities present themselves in those people first. That doesn't mean that it's not going to move into other segments of the population especially as uh, people's immune systems become compromised, et cetera, et cetera, right? And it may just take longer. It may take longer to take effect in people or they may catch it twice. If it mutates, if it mutates the second time around, they could get a um, much stronger, uh, a stronger version of it, right? Iceland, Iceland is a place I'm really concerned of. They've only had one death so far though. So that's really good news. But um, for a country that small to have 568 cases, that is really alarming. So let's close off this. Uh, let's take a look at British Columbia, our home province here. Take a look at all of Canada. Don't feel neglected. If you're in Ontario or Quebec, if you're in Quebec and you understand English, hey, keep watching. I won't neglect you. Uh, what are we looking at? British Columbia, 424. Ontario has actually moved ahead with one extra case. Um, uh, that's odd. I wonder if that is a testing issue. See, that's that's why that's why the deaths are a much better indicator to me than the cases, because the cases we just nobody's tested me. You know, maybe I have it right. Um, like, I mean, ninety nine percent of the population, I'm sure, has not been tested yet. And until that comes out, we're really not going to know what's happening, right? How many people are just sick or think that they have a regular cold or a flu or just have some symptoms? Um, or just enough that they feel a little bit off, but it's still enough to carry it and potentially kill someone else, right? That's the big concern. Um, and so the cases, while it is a marker of some sorts, because we can see it escalating and we can see that it is in fact present and growing, um, it's the information can be a little bit misleading. But we are up to 1,430 cases overall. 20 people have died, 18 have recovered. And that's another interesting thing. Um, the recovered, that's a statistic you don't see a whole lot of, and it's its very low. Like 20 people have already died and only 18 have recovered. So that's 38. So, I mean, that means 1,392 people still have this. So like, how long does this last? That's what I would like to know. Once you're sick, once you've been determined to have symptoms, how long does it take before you can be cleared or considered recovered, right? These are some some questions we'll have to we'll have to find answers to. And finally, I have this this wonderful little gem of a story. Uh, do, 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 do. So a family has been fined after selling medical masks in Port Coquitlam at steep prices. So. What can you really say about this? I mean, you know, I, I thought hoarding and selling toilet paper was bad. And it is bad. That's a real kind of douchebag move. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab all this stuff and I'm going to charge you more. Ha, 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 ha. This epidemic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rich. <clears throat> but, I mean, that's one thing. But taking medical masks and selling them? Like, holy shit, this is, this is sociopathic. This is people that just don't give a fuck, right? Like, I mean, if you're going to take medical masks and, oh, yeah, $20 each, what can you say? Anyways, they've been fined. I don't think fining is enough for this kind of thing. I think people should be severely penalized. I mean, you're, you're fucking trying to make money off things that could say, like, what if somebody has to care for a sick father or, or a sick mother, right? Or a relative, you know, and they're already strapped for cash, right? They're, they're already having trouble getting groceries. Then you got these assholes, um, you know, hoarding masks and selling them. So, you know what? I mean, that's, there's obviously some bad actors out there, but there's way more good actors. We should all be happy to know that um, 
Uh, Canada Care Mongering is a group started by a friend of mine, Manny Amar, and um, they've already got, I think they got six, 700 members already. And what they're doing is they're making deliveries and they're helping out people that are in need. So um, shout out to them. You'll find them on Facebook. Look up uh, Canada Care Mongering. And I'm going to have something, I got something in the works with these guys, but I'm going to keep it a surprise. All right, so let's get to the heart of the matter. Rumors. Now, <clears throat> at times like this, uh, rumors, rumors circulate, right? Rumors circulate, and unfortunately, uh, the media has, they've just become so sensational and, and so misleading over the last uh, X amount of years that it's really hard to believe them. So this opens up more what you would call fake news or rumors, right? So let's go through a few of them. Uh, rumor number one, this virus was started in a lab in Canada. So I've heard this rumor. I've seen this on a YouTube video that the virus um, was started and developed in Canada. And then um, somebody from China either took it over, worked in Canada and took it back to China or stole it in Canada and took it to China. And, um, and then it's accidentally gotten out. Now, I have no doubt um, at all. Well, we know that um, there are people that are working on viruses, uh, I, I guess, ostensibly to cure people, right? But I mean, <laughs> you know, um, we know that um, there has been some back and forth between Canada and China um, with in terms of people that work um, people with Chinese Chinese nationals that come and work in Canada or have dual citizenship or go back and forth. Uh, and that is all. So, I mean, all of this stuff is within the realm of possibility, uh, but it's very unlikely that it's true. It's very unlikely that it's true. Um, first of all, it, it would just, it would just be extreme comp incompetence on the part of the government and that's not impossible. We know that they have shown incompetence, but it would also be extreme incompetence on the side of the Chinese government. And they're pretty ruthless. So to have those things both coincide and uh, the time when most of these activities took place, uh, there was a bunch of lab workers in Canada that, that were fired for um, this incident, uh, this related incident. Uh, that was, I think, over a year and a half ago. So I think we can probably put that one to rest. I think the, the most obvious explanation that's come forward is that this virus uh, started in one of the wet markets <clears throat> in China, in the Wuhan uh, province. And, you know, we want to believe these things. We want to believe that it's a secret bioweapon that's been started. But, you know, I mean, do you think Canada wanted this? <laughs> Trudeau didn't want this. Trust me. Um, China didn't want it. Like nobody wanted this. So, you know, for them to kind of put it out there. Um, another thing I've heard is that warm water kills the virus. Uh, I heard this just the other day that drinking warm water, um, either it, it, um, it rinses the virus down into your stomach where it's destroyed, um, by the acids in your stomach. And yes, your stomach uh, acids can destroy a lot of bacteria, whether they can destroy this particular one. I, I really don't think this has been proven yet. Uh, and I don't think drink, drinking warm water would be enough. So, I mean, that's just kind of stands against logic uh, and common sense. Um, you know, and that, that's kind of what you have to approach really. Like, you know, do, do you think you could get AIDS by drinking, get rid of AIDS by drinking warm water? Like if it would apply to this thing, it would apply to everything. Like, you would never get the flu if all you had to do was drink warm water four times a day, right? Uh, might not drink a shot of vodka. Maybe that'll kill it, right? Uh, <clears throat> here's another one I've heard. The government is doing this to control the population. Okay. Now, we know that our governments um, definitely should not be given carte blanche, right? Do not give the government everything they want. This is this we know. Um, we know that the government has made bad decisions in the past, right? We can look at reservation schools. We can look at um, 
wars that they've gotten us into. Uh, I don't know, people that have been jailed wrongly. Like there's a whole list of stuff that our government has done. It doesn't matter whether it's a conservative government, liberal government, Republican government, Democrat government, labor government, whatever. The people in power, they often tend to abuse that power, right? Um, I think that's just human nature. So these sorts of things are possible. Um, but I think this would be more of a situation of the government taking advantage of a situation in order to control the population and then maintain those controls. Uh, they really don't have the competence or the capability to execute something like this to this degree that would hurt them um, as much, right? Like, I mean, this could cost the Trump uh, presidency. This could cost him his presidency. This could cost Trudeau his presidency, although he's, he's pretty early on in his term, so he'll, he'll probably survive this. But there was big mistakes made, right? And, you know, these things that they're doing, like cutting off uh, the borders, shutting down the economy, that doesn't help them. It's not going to help any of them. So this is bad news for them as much as it is for the rest of us. Will they be opportunistic and use this as an opportunity to install permanent controls or whatever? Yeah, that's a possibility. But them orchestrating this just to control the population, I don't think so. Uh, the fascists are trying to kill old and sick people. Uh, again, that would, that would presume that there is somebody, some evil genius in a lab that's creating this stuff and is so good at it and dispersing it. And I mean, none of this stuff is impossible. Um, but it, it's obviously, it's a lot harder than we think, right? I mean, you know, their effect, it, it's just so random and indiscriminate, like it's affecting every place. And I mean, this would really be a sociopathic person or group of people. Like one person could not pull this off on their own. They would need a team. That's the thing. Um, creating bioweapons, like, again, I, I'm no expert. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical practitioner. I'm not even a chiropractor. I don't play one on YouTube. I'm just an idiot. Don't take my advice. You know, this is for entertainment only. <clears throat> but I don't think it's easy to develop bioweapons in your basement. Like, I think you need a lot of support. Um, first of all, there's probably only a handful of people within any country that could do that. Um, they would need a lot of finance. They would need a lot of time. You know, they, there would be a big trail. Um, you just, you couldn't get some random actor putting this shit together and then distributing it in the way it's been done. Okay. So no, fascists are not trying to kill old and sick people. Uh, another one I've heard is the Democrats are trying to sink Donald Trump's presidency. Um, that's just as um, that's just as nonsensical as the one before. Uh, maybe they won't sink his presidency. I mean, where are the Democrats, right? Like, where's Joe Biden? Joe Biden is the front runner, and who knows? Maybe he's got the coronavirus. Like, nobody's even seen anything from him. Um, and you know, their people are are getting this just as much. Uh, maybe more even than Republicans are. So it's, you know, it's like trying to, um, let's say you have ants in your house. It's like calling in the military to firebomb your house because you don't want ants. You may get the ants, but <laughs> what's left, right? Um, drug companies are sitting on a cure. Okay, this is one I've heard. Um, I've heard there's a few companies that suspiciously um, have a vaccine ready to go. Uh, where is it then? I mean, if they have a vaccine, why isn't it out now? Like, surely, the, I, don't, I don't know if this is peak hysteria, but surely the hysteria is at a stage right now where you could sell your vaccine to every country in the world. You could sell it for a boatload of money or, you know, just businesses alone that are going to be crippled by this. Um, would probably pitch in for something like that, right? So I think, um, and also, I mean, this is called novel, right? It's novel coronavirus. That means it's new. So it's a new thing that's been seen. I, I don't think there's a, a vaccine that's developed yet. I hope there isn't a vaccine going forward for this shit, man. I, I hope it's really just a cure or it's just something that's in and out. Although that, that seems unlikely at this point. I, I think we're all going to be dealing with this forever, but um, number seven, the media are overhyping this. Um, 
I don't know if that's the case. I mean, well, okay. Um, the media is really hyping this. Are they overhyping it? Well, if you look in, um, if you look at numbers in a historical context, then I think the answer would probably be yes, they are overhyping it. If you look at um, other pandemics in the past, I think in 1957, let me look this up here real quick. Uh, 1957 U.S. flu pandemic. Uh, Asian flu of 1957. Asian again. Hey, I'm, I'm just reading what's on Wikipedia, okay? Listen, I cast no judgment towards our, our Asian bro brothers and sisters. Although, let's be honest, these things are starting in Asia, right? Okay, so the Asian flu of 1957. Uh, the Asian flu of 1957, also called the Asian flu pandemic of 1957, was first identified by uh, in February of 1957 in East Asia and subsequently spread to countries worldwide uh huh there was another <laughs> my um my politically correct friends are not going to like this but there was another maybe i should share the screen so you guys can see this so you don't think i'm making it up there was another pandemic that came out called from hong kong so uh let's take a look <clears throat> okay um the asian flu there's a Hong Kong flu pandemic. We'll check that one out. The Asian flu outbreak caused an estimated one to two million deaths worldwide and is generally considered to have been the least severe of the three influenza pandemics of the 20th century. Okay, so one to two million deaths worldwide. That's a lot. That's what are we at now? We're at 14,000, right? Um, so to put this in perspective, <clears throat> the population of the earth right now is just about 8 billion. The population in 1957 was probably two and a half billion, maybe 3 billion. I don't know. Um, it, it's way less than it is now though. And that's one to 2 million deaths. So that'd be probably the equivalent of having five or 6 million deaths now. So this, that was huge, right? Um, da, 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 da. Uh, okay, by December, okay, uh, November of 1957, uh, the upsurge in cases was a result of a second pandemic wave of illness that struck the Northern Hemisphere in 1957. At that time, the pandemic was already widespread in the United Kingdom. Uh, by December, a total of 3,550 deaths had been reported in England and Wales. Uh, that's more than they have now, way more than they have now from... Um, from COVID-19. And you know what? My dad lived in England in 1957. I've never heard a word about this. Uh, the second wave was particularly devastating. And by March 1958, an estimated 69,800 deaths had occurred in the United States. So that's a lot. That is quite a bit, right? Um, let's quickly take a look at the Hong Kong flu pandemic. 1968, right? What do we think of with 1968? We think of, uh, you know, hippies. We think of music probably. Uh, um, this started in Hong Kong. And huh, I don't know. I'm getting kind of spammed on this site a little bit. All right. Well, whatever. <clears throat> probably, I mean, if it was more deadly than the previous um, uh, Asian flu, then um, yeah, you'd be looking at millions worldwide. So, okay. So the answer is yes, the media is overhyping. Um, because I mean, be honest, who here knew about the 1957 Asian flu? I'll wait. I'll wait. I didn't think so. Who here has heard of the 1968 Hong Kong flu? crickets again, right? None of us knew about this um, because it wasn't blown up to these incredible proportions, right? The only one we've ever heard of is the Spanish flu. And I mean, that one was like pandemic times 10, right? That killed, uh, I think it was 20 to 40 million people, something like that, right? And it was right on the heels of World War I. So 
So yes, the media is overhyping it. And interestingly, both those pandemics, um, I don't think there's any closure of the economy. Uh, old people affected, we already answered that one. Americans started this virus and sent it to China. Uh, that's ridiculous again. I mean, if they did, why would they not close flights from China? You know, why would they wait? I mean, Donald Trump, didn't Donald Trump in 2016 run as the close the borders guy? Wasn't he the guy that was going to shut down the borders? Hmm. See, he didn't want to disrupt the money flow, right? And so he kept them open. Um, you know, same Trudeau kept them open too for, you know, virtue signaling. I'm not racist. Um, and both of them, you know, have paid, they forced the rest of us to pay a price for that. But I mean, the fact that, you know, Americans started it and then it's come back and now it's about to do in his presidency, that's another ridiculous one. Uh, the last one is that um, we are going to transition to UBI after this. If you don't know what UBI is, that stands for Universal Basic Income. And I think, you know what? I mean, there's a possibility that that could come in as a temporary measure. Uh, whether it would be permanent, I don't know. I think there's a lot of other problems that come out with something like that, which, you know, this would be a whole other video. But um, maybe I'll do a video on UBI and the pluses and, and negatives, right? It does sound attractive, right? Don't we all want $1,000 a month? Of course, right? But anyways, that's it for now. I will cut it short. Um, those are the rumors. A lot of these times, you know what, we like to look for these elaborate explanations. Um, and a lot of times the most simple explanation is the correct one. I think that's, uh, there's a law behind that. What is it? I can't remember. Anyways, uh, I will see you guys later tomorrow, tomorrow evening. We are going to be talking to somebody in New York living under the lockdown. Her name is Angie. I know her well. We're going to find out what life is like in a lockdown, okay? This will be a must listen because we all better get used to it because it's coming here. It's coming quick, okay? I will see you guys later. Uh, stay safe. Let me know if you have questions. And remember, we're all in this together. We'll get out of it together.